You ever have a Sunday morning when you feel like sleeping in? Barely got time to get to church before the service begins. Fight off temptation and stay home in bed. When you hear that music playing, be thankful that you did. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Preach that sermon, preacher. Teach us of the law. Lift our spirits up. Greatest story ever told. I know brother Jesus is with us here today. Ever two or more of us are gathered in his name. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. There's a mighty power in that little word. So don't be shy. Testify. The truth is all you heard. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. When you feel your burden is more than you can bear, never underestimate the power of prayer. Faith can move a mountain in a common angry sea. There's no limit what God can do if you believe. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? lights to unity of san antonio online unity is a positive path for spiritual living we offer spiritual teachings that provide practical tools for meaningful and abundant living we are inclusive and open-minded our philosophy is more spiritual than religious and is love-based we honor all paths to god we believe in making a positive difference in the world as divine love, we envision a spiritually transformed, peaceful world. We dance in the truth of who we are through meditation, study, and service. Please visit our website, unityofsa.org, again, unityofsa.org, to learn about all our current online opportunities for classes, meditation, and projects that we are engaged in to serve the greater San Antonio community. For updates directly in your email, click the envelope icon on our website to sign up for our e-newsletter. Thank you.
I'm believing in my guiding light No matter what comes, it always turns out right Just get right down to how I feel Then take a deep breath and grab the wheel I'm believing in my guiding light Take it away, George San Antonio, we honor the inherent wholeness and wisdom within people of all ages. We are a community inclusive of young people who have a really special place in our hearts. Your youth and family ministry are currently homeschooling. This is our blessing for them and for all young people in the world. Children and teens, we know who you are. You are the light of God. We love you. We bless you. We celebrate you. And we see you doing great things. In preparation for the 24-hour vigil and online event, World Day of Prayer, on September 9 through 10, 2020, our Unity of San Antonio prayer chaplains have been composing special prayers. Our opening prayer today was composed by prayer chaplain Marsha Hendricks. And so I invite you now to relax and close your eyes if you like. And shift your awareness to our divine nature as I share this prayer with you. As my day begins with micro purposefulness, the presence of wonder in the amazing moment to moment breath of being unfolds. Miracles in my backyard, incredible living colors and plant presents of fruits and vegetables. They fill my heart with awe and gratitude. As the calming peace of that awareness overshadows any fear, I feel the presence of divine love. We are experiencing a worldwide shift which can be terrifying and can be morally crushing at times. 
But I choose to see this time through a God filter and to be privileged to be a part of this unprecedented process. I know in my deepest sense of knowing that these wondrous changes await unity, equality, and love for each other and the planet. I affirm the path from fear to faith is present in each of us. Please wear your God filter and your face mask in peace and love. And so it is. Amen. We're all in this life together Living a mystery Our days are touched by joy Touched by pain Asking why Longing for meaning Searching for hope Searching for who I've come here to be A prayer. Our hearts are yearning for the truth. When we feel alone, when we can't find our way, the answers are right here. We stand before an old. We all need a prayer to, to remind us who we are. Somehow we keep forgetting, lost in the shadow.
So here today to provide our meditation and Sunday message is our beloved senior minister at Unity of San Antonio, Reverend Jimmy Scott. Good morning, and thank you, music team. We all do need a prayer, and I need one in particular. So this morning, I want to begin with a brief message from the Daily Word, followed by a time of prayer and meditation. So if you're somewhere where you can be comfortable with closing your eyes, you may want to do so at this point as I share this brief message about inner peace. The peace of God fills my mind, my body, and my life. Quiet moments in a fragrant garden or a stroll by a lake or stream, or possibly even a visit to any place of beauty inspires a deep awareness of peace in us. One can also enjoy peace in the company of friends or anyone with whom there is easy camaraderie and deep bonds. As we grow in spirit and become much more aware of who we are, we can claim inner peace at any point, at any place, at any time. So today, wherever you are, please realize that true inner peace comes from deep within you. This message was inspired from the book of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, and the third verse. Those in steadfast mind you keep in peace. So let's take a few moments now to enter deeper into that space of inner peace within us for a few moments of meditation and contemplation. And equally as important, a few moments of opening our hearts and our minds and our spirits to that deep inner presence within us that reminds us of our greatness, of our majesty, of our spirituality, and of our humanity. That space where we truly understand that we are at one with all life. The space that reminds us of the connectivity that is inherent in the universe and therefore inherent in our lives. When we are in that place of deep knowing and inner receptivity, we catch glimpses of what our life can be and what it is And we, kept, we catch glimpses of the vision, the inner vision, that enables us to see beyond the present moment. To see deep into our lives, into the affairs of the world. And know that with all the inharmony and seeming conflict, that there is also peace and understanding and love. And as we reflect deeper, we understand that at any moment we can connect those spiritual issues to lift ourselves to a higher place so that in any moment of darkness and despair we are always aware 
that there's also light. So again, take a deep breath. And for just a moment or two, allow yourself to disconnect from the external world. And just rest in that peace that defies all understanding. It is in those deep moments of inner peace when we make the connection that our healing and our transformation takes place. It is in those moments of quietness that our inner knowing shifts us into a higher consciousness. So today, despite all the chaos and confusion in our world, we give thanks for the other side there's peace and love and acceptance and understanding, guidance and direction, purity of heart and purity of mind. We give thanks for these realizations in the name and through the nature of the living Christ spirit. And so it is. And amen. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold. When I decided to go with this title, the first thing that occurred to me was that many of you out there might think that I've gone off the deep end. And the truth is I've sort of been off the deep end pretty much all of my life. But there is a method to my madness with this message this morning. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold is one of the many thought-provoking concepts that came from the creative genius of the ancient philosopher Heraclitus. Heraclitus was apparently the type of person who believed it was his purpose to make people think and man, could he do that. So following that train of thought about thinking, it reminds me of a story. Some of you may remember the 1960s television series, The Twilight Zone. In one of my favorite episodes of the series, there was a show that was titled The Rip Van Winkle Caper. The plot of the show was pretty simple. There were four thieves who robbed a gold bullion train from Fort Knox, and they took the proceedings from that train robbery and hid their fortune in gold bricks in a cave. And then they entered into a state of suspended animation for a hundred years. And they were certain that if they stayed in that state of frozen animation for a hundred years, they would evade capture because by the time they came out of the state, everyone would have forgotten the caper and moved on. 
So they hide their bounty. They go into this state of suspended animation. They awaken a hundred years later, and they they find that their plan had worked perfectly, except when they tried to cash in on their bounty, they found out that it was completely worthless. In the interim, the gold at that point was of less value than water of the same weight. Now, that was an interesting story back when I watched it during the 60s. As I think about it more today, there were a lot of hidden messages that I probably wasn't paying much attention to other than the drama or the series at the time. One of those thoughts that occurred to me is there are times in life when we strive for a lot of things. We want recognition, fame, fortune. But how much value do these things that we strive for truly have when we consider the sacrifices, the struggles, the other missed opportunities that we sometimes have to put aside in order to enjoy those things? It's a question that's worth pondering. In Heraclitus' time, one primary reason donkeys preferred garbage instead of gold was donkeys had the opportunity to run freely. And most of the time, they could be found running loose in the garbage dumps of the area, using their heads to nuzzle around through the garbage and sniff around for food. So again, when we look at the idea of donkeys preferring garbage to gold, it's still about value. Donkeys have no value in gold. The bigger question it poses is what do we value in our lives? Another angle on this creative enigma that the philosopher wrote comes from the spiritual perspective. And the choices we make in our spiritual lives and why do we make them? Most of us grew up in these United States under the guise of Christianity where we are told that we must make sacrifices and must choose between good and evil and all of those cliches that are much more difficult to understand fully than they are just blindly following them by faith. The truth is, if we believe that we are all divinely guided, how do we use that guidance that we receive? Do we make our decisions out of blind loyalty or to some belief that has no solid foundation in fact. The universe is a place of abundance. Pretty much everyone you come in contact with will indicate that truth to one degree or another. There is no withholding in God is another way I understand that. We've been created to make the absolute best of who we are and what we have in our possession. And the scripture confirms that pretty much all throughout the Bible. There's one particular statement in in scripture that I love. It's where Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. 
Most of us do a lot of asking in our lives. But how often do we feel that we truly receive? So let's take that statement a little deeper. Jesus also reminded us that there are times when we pray amiss. In other words, there are times when we ask wrongly. Put another way, sometimes we pray for something with no consideration for how much value that something can actually contribute to our well-being. There's been a wealth of stuff in my life that I've saved for and begged for and desired and then acquire it, and for a few moments it has its glistening, and then it's put aside somewhere, and I've moved on to the next thing. In those kinds of times when we catch ourselves praying amiss, and begging, and beseeching, and using up our spiritual resources, and unproductive ways. It could be more productive for us to affirm that we are just going to make the best use of the talents and the skills and the abilities that we already have and have been ignoring because we don't value them. I know this has been true in my own life. I've seen the experience in, this, in the experiences of others. One expansion to Jesus' declaration, ask and you shall receive, is found in this statement. He follows the statement up with this. He's to him, he says, to him who has, who has appreciation for what he has, more will be given. To him who has, or has more appreciation of what he has, is more will be given. The good will be expanded. And the more a person appreciates the good in their lives, the more it expands their world. Heraclitus, or Heraclitus as he's called by some, understood the principles and he also understood the behavior patterns of donkeys and human beings. The fact is both species have a tendency to you know, sit on their assets from time to time. And when we don't make good use of our assets, their value diminishes. They can actually go away. The last line in that scripture by Jesus says, to him who has not, to him who doesn't appreciate the gift of spirit in him or her, that gift that's lying dormant, that's unused, that will be taken away. It will be diminished into nothingness. And one will awaken one day and discover that their gold is worth no more than water. Interesting dynamics. In the human experience, what's valuable and what's worthless is always subjective. But in the spiritual experience, it's important to be objective and receptive. It's important to challenge our conventional thinking and thus become more creative in our approach to everything that transpires in our lives. There's a line in the Gospel of Luke where Christ is quoted as saying, Wisdom is justified by her children. Put another way, wisdom is the power of discernment in us that creates the thoughts 
that enable us to uplift our lives and helps us to choose what to do in the appropriate time and always be our most productive and creative selves. Put another way, it's our inner guidance system that separates the gold from the garbage in our minds and in the manifest realm. In our manifest realm, which is our outer world, we often judge our experiences from the standpoint of duality. We, we experience things as being either good or bad. But wisdom, again, is justified by her children. And our results are not always as good or as bad as we think they are, depending on the type of situations we find ourselves in and the type of conditions that we have to navigate in our lives. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold. It's <laughs> unconventional wisdom. Modern pundits might call it thinking outside the box. The follow-up to that unconventional wisdom is this bit of wisdom from the next epigram after Donkeys prefer garbage to go. The next epigram, Heraclitus just stated, is every walking animal is driven to its purpose with a whack. Now, I would call that a cosmic too before. A whack is metaphorically that which forces an individual to pay attention. And as I review my life, some of the most rewarding experiences that I have received have resulted after a cosmic two before. Because the whack not only got my attention, it also reminded me of my purpose. And it forced me to become more focused. It forced me to rethink what's most important in my life and to be more appreciative of it. Many of us in the human condition can be both self-critical and critical of others, and we can be critical of circumstances and conditions, particularly the kinds of circumstances and conditions that we've had to deal with over the past few months. But how much do we turn to the gift of appreciation in us? Because appreciation is much more conducive to enabling us to be able to move beyond this pandemic and into something more positive and more constructive that will enable us to set forth a more, much more bolder and beautiful world for us to enjoy. This thing that we call spirituality is a very deep and personal thing in our lives. It should make us have to look at our assumptions and be able to discern with more insight how we can improve not only our own standards, but the standards of everyone around us. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold, and every walking animal is driven to his purpose with a whack. <laughs> I appreciate your listening this morning. And I appreciate my Sunday morning team for being here with me to help keep me on point. And I appreciate 
our staff here and our congregation and your continued support of this ministry. For all my amazing family and friends, today I want to appreciate you and apologize for not doing that more. This week, friends, look for those things that you can appreciate or do appreciate and then appreciate them more deeply. Have a great week. Reverend Jimmy is quite a bit taller than me. We appreciate that unconventional wisdom today, Reverend Jimmy. And I'm here to remind you that your giving is especially important at this time. We invite you to participate in the flow of abundant living through your generosity to our spiritual community by contributing. Please go to unityofsa.org and click on the green donate area to donate online. Or mail a check to Unity Church of San Antonio, 8103 Broadway Street, Suite 210, San Antonio, Texas, 78209. Our prosperity blessing is divine love as our community blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we are, all that we give, and all that we receive. Amen. Please stay tuned for some special music from our Unity of San Antonio music team. Thank you, Bertie, and thank you, Reverend Jimmy, so much for those words of wisdom. <clears throat> God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Love. Love is my source. Love is my me everything I need. Joy. Joy is my source. Joy is my power. Joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Joy gives me Peace 
peace gives me everything I need. God, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Yes, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me Gives me everything I need. So are we are all experiencing some challenging times. This song we do quite a bit. Well, we've done we've done on several occasions. We've performed this for you. Some one of my very, very favorite songs, All Shall Be Well. As a reminder, it really will be okay. And we hold on to that. All shall be well All shall be green pastures and I know that I'm not alone the song of the meadow lark sings to my soul tenderly calling me home all shall be well all shall be well all manner of things shall be shall be well all shall be well all manner of things shall be well I am walking beside the still waters as fresh as Whispering, giving me the strength to carry on. All shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. All shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. Surely goodness and mercy will follow And love will be leading the way Every shadow will shine in the fullness of time And bloom in the hearts of the brave All shall be well shall be well all shall be well all manner of things shall be well all shall be well all shall be well all manner of things shall be well all shall be well
In closing our service today, we'll share our community blessing, followed by the prayer of protection, followed by the peace song. Please feel free to join in at home. So, beloved friends, I see your divine light. I see your open heart. I see your life transforming. I celebrate your divine identity as you radiate your light in the world. Prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So please join us for the peace song. Beautiful lights. Have a blessed week.